Hello, my name is David Taylor. Welcome to Lesson 1 of Photography Basics. In this lesson, I'll be talking about the functions of your camera that allow you to control the exposure of your photos. To create a photo, you need a camera, but you also need light. In fact, the word photography literally means writing with light. From the Greek words photos and graphos, light and writing respectively. To make a technically successful photo, a very precise amount of light must be allowed into the camera, neither too much nor too little. Achieving this is known as making the correct exposure. Camera technology has changed rapidly in the past 10 years or so, as film has given way to digital. However, in principle, all cameras, whether film or digital, are essentially light tight boxes that contain a light sensitive surface inside. In a digital camera, this light sensitive surface is the sensor. When you press the shutter button on your camera, light enters the camera to fall onto the sensor. At that point, the quantity and quality of the light is recorded and converted into data that is then processed by the camera to create the final photo. Photography would be far easier if the level of available light was constant. However, the world is more complex than this and also more interesting. You'll quickly learn as your photography skills develop that the amount of available light varies enormously, particularly when shooting outside, when it can fluctuate from minute to minute. This photo was shot just before the sun emerged from behind a rain cloud. A few minutes earlier, and the light levels were far lower. A few minutes later, when the sun was fully out, the light levels were far higher. If I shot a photo for each of these three different lighting conditions, three different exposure settings would have been needed. To accommodate this variability in light levels, cameras have three exposure controls. The three controls are the shutter speed, the aperture, and the ISO setting. Altering just one of these controls will affect the look of the final photo, sometimes in very dramatic ways. Understanding how these three controls work and the effect they have on the photo is therefore the key to successful and creative photography. Modern cameras are usually equipped with a variety of shooting modes. Some of these modes will automatically set the exposure for you so that you just have to point and shoot. Although there's nothing wrong with using these automatic shooting modes, they often allow at best a limited amount of control over the final exposure. If you want to take your photography further, I'd recommend using one of the semi-automatic modes, such as aperture or shutter priority, or if you really want to be in the driving seat, using a manual exposure mode. I'll mention which mode to use when, when later in this lesson. 